Welcome. In this video, we will take a look at the multiplication strategy called making benchmark or friendly numbers. In order for students to be successful with this strategy, first students will need to understand what friendly or benchmark numbers are. This strategy will be introduced in third grade and will continue to be used through fifth grade. This strategy directly relates to computational fluency standards, asking students to use their knowledge of numbers and number relationships to multiply fluently. Often, a multiplication problem can be made easier by changing one of the factors into a friendly or benchmark number. By using friendly or benchmark numbers, it will make a hard multiplication problem easier for students to solve. Students who are comfortable with multiplying by multiples of 10 will often adjust factors to allow them to take advantage of their strengths. However, this strategy can go beyond just 10s. If students are really good with their 2s or 5s facts, or any facts for that matter, they can use those as friendly numbers to make other multiplication equations easier. The point of this strategy is for students to be able to use their multiplication strengths to multiply. There, will, there are two things to keep in mind when using this strategy. First, when you are adding onto a factor, you are adding that many sets or groups. For example, for the equation 9 times 7, I can change the 9 to a 10 by adding one group of 7. Second, when you get the new product, 10 times 7 equals 70, your students will have to remember to take away a group of 7 that they added on, so 70 minus 7 to get that 63. Now I will be introducing the friendly or benchmark number strategy for multiplication to the students. Boys and girls, we're working on being able to fluently multiply two factors together. Let's try the benchmark or friendly number strategy with the equation 9 times 8. So we have 9 groups of 8, which can be pretty tricky for us to multiply. So let's change that, since 9 is really close to 10, let's make it 10 groups of 8. And so we can easily multiply 10 times 8. That's going to give us the product of 80. But we have to remember that the original problem was 9 groups of 8, not 10 groups of 8. So we have to take this 80, and we need to take away that extra group of 8 that we added to make that 10. So 80 minus 8 is going to get us 72. So when we're looking for finding the product of 9 times 8, it's going to be 72. Let's go ahead and look at another example. So this time we have 4 times 7. 7 is really not all that close to 10, but 4 is really close to 5. So we can have our 4 groups of 7, and we can change it to five groups of seven by adding another group of seven on. So seven times five is really easy. It's going to give us a product of 35 because all I have to do is count by fives. So we have to remember, though, we added an extra group of seven to get that five. So we are going to take that 35, and we're going to subtract that group of seven away, and that's going to get us 28. So the product of 4 times 7 is going to get us 28. Let's say, though, we're working with a much more difficult equation. So we have, this time, 8 times 15. So we have 8 groups of 15. Well, that 8 is still pretty close to 10. We just have to add 2 groups of 15 to it. So that's going to give us 10 groups of 15. Now 15 times 10 is a lot easier than 8 times 15. So I can multiply those together and get the product of 150. But again, this time I added two groups of 15. So I need to take those two groups of 15 away. So here's one group of 15 and my second group of 15. So that's going to get me 150 minus 30, which is going to give me a difference of 20. So 800, or 8 times 15 is going to have a product of 120. When in 
introducing this strategy, it is best to start with very simple examples so that students can easily see the number relationships. Once the numbers get trickier, provide some ample practice in making the problems easier. The focus doesn't need to be on the answer, but, but rather the effective use of this strategy.